Last week, Raspberry Pi CEO Eben Upton was on a hack chat on Hackaday, where he revealed a few little bits of information about what we can expect from a Raspberry Pi 6, among other things. The hack chat was basically a bunch of people asking random questions, and while there's nothing too detailed, I think I can get an idea of where Raspberry Pi is moving. First off, some people were asking about the RP2040 and RP2350 and the RP1 that's on the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, basically asking, like, could we bring some of the functionality in the newer RP2 generation chips into the RP1 on the Pi 5 and give features like uh, full sleep mode or um, other power management things that we can get? And he said that basically, yes, but chip design takes a really long time. And the RP1, uh, where did he say it here? Uh, he said that the RP1 engineering started in 2015, way back then. That's like almost 10 years ago. You know, they're they're doing a little bit better. They're doing more iterative designs now, so that's good. Uh, but it'll take a long time, even if they want to do what he's saying in RP1.5 that might have more sleep functionality and, and more interfaces and things. He said that'd be late 2020s. So those kind of features could be coming, and technically speaking, I think he even said that those features could make it into the Pi 5 at some point through software updates, but it doesn't seem like that's a high priority right now. There are some other things like uh, Phil LL uh, has PIO on some of the pins on the Pi 5, so that's kind of cool, but um, I, I don't think we'll see a huge amount of uh, improvements to that on the Pi 5 as it stands right now. I still would love to see a deep sleep support at some point. Um, you know, two, two to three watts at idle is good, but you could do better if you have a Pi that, you know, you can sleep it and then bring it up, do something, and, and sleep it again, kind of like a microcontroller, but with full Linux. He also mentioned that with the existing chips that they have, there are still other improvements they're working on. Like on the Pi 5, they had the uh, SD RAM tweaks that I've talked about many times before that's led to a lot faster performance in things like Geekbench, but also in other benchmarks and just in general day-to-day -day use as well. So, you know, it sounds like there's still more performance on the table with the Pi 5, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people choose Raspberry Pi instead of some other boards. Raspberry Pi is still supporting this. It's been a couple years, and it's still the premier Pi. But even if you have a Pi 4, you're getting a faster Pi 4 with these improvements too. A lot of other uh, ARM SBCs out there, after they release the next shiny version, the old shiny versions don't get much love anymore. Uh, so it's nice to see that they are still uh, thinking about the Pi 5 generations because I guarantee they're working on a Pi 6 already. I mean, if, if the years, if it's like a four to six to eight year timeline for these new chips, that means they've been working on this for a while now and at some point they're going to release something new. But it's good to see that they don't just abandon the old product when they're working on the new thing. Uh, we'll get to the Pi 3.0 at some point, but uh, Eben also mentioned that the Pi 5 PoE Plus Hat Plus that they've been working on, they announced it alongside the Pi 5 like over a year ago now, and uh, it's still not here. He said uh, development hull product on that one. Yeah, from what I've heard, there was, you know, that whoever is the engineer that's in charge of that project had some issues, and um, it's just, it it's taken a very long time. Uh, luckily, there's third-party options out there, some of which I've covered on uh, the Jeff Geerling channel. And, you know, for me, I, I actually am using a few of the Hacker Gadgets uh, hats now because it offers you an NVMe slot and PoE all on one little board for a very compact little Pi. Uh, but people were asking about a Pi 3.0, and, and uh, you know, people are asking for all kinds of different um, options out there, Wi-Fi 7 and things like that. I, I don't think that the Pi the Pi Zero form factor is going to have like the premier features at any point, but he did mention, well, that was a phone call. Somebody wants to book a Pilates session with me. I think you have the wrong phone number. In terms of the future products, he mentioned basically the thing that I think all of us who have used Pi Zeros have mentioned, we need more RAM. Uh, the CPU is plenty fast for most of the things that I would ever use a Pi Zero for. And a lot of the things that I've tried doing on it, it's like, uh, if I just had another half a gig of RAM, I could do this thing. So uh, he said that the, the difficulty there is they have this custom chip that's a stacked chip design, the BCM2837, the RP3A0. And uh, he said it's very hard to get two layers of LPDDR2 RAM on there. And uh, I'm sure there's many different layers to why, layers, to why that's a, an issue, but I, I think that It'd be nice if this happens at some point, if we could get a gig, even if they just made a Pi Zero 2 Plus or something with one gig of RAM, that would make it immensely more useful, even if it's 20 bucks. I think that that would be a really cool option uh, to upgrade 
for a lot of these little projects that you need a little gumstick computer. And then someone also asked about NVMe on the Pi 500. And it's interesting, you know, in my video, I, I basically said it'd be really cool to have that, that slot, an M.2 slot on the Pi 500. The pads are there. It's obvious that they cut that feature out at some point. His reasoning is the pricing. Uh, they wanted to make sure that the price was as low as possible. And for a feature where you, some people might break the keyboard on it, uh, snapping it off, he said that, that NVMe just didn't make the cut for the regular Pi 500. And I get it. I still think, I don't know. I, to, to make the Pi 500 a more long-term uh, device, something that's more useful five, 10 years in the future uh, for people reusing it in other applications or taking out the boards and putting them into something else, I think having that M.2 slot would have been helpful. And if not that, at least a PCIe FFC header like on the Pi 5 somewhere. I don't see why there's no exposure to that PCIe lane, but you know, whatever, that's their decision. And it sounds like uh, he also was asked about the RP2350 and uh, some design changes to it, things like that. It sounds like they're not planning on remodeling the whole thing, uh, but it is interesting to note that there were some, uh, some security vulnerabilities found in the hacking challenge that they did. And they're planning on probably a respin, basically fixing some issues on the chip and having like a, a, a version two stepping. And I think if they do that, they might also fix uh, some of the little bugs that people have found that can either be a non-issue for some people or can be a huge issue for some people, depending on what you're building with a RP2350. Good to know that it sounds like they're working on that. Hopefully that'll come sometime soon. And the Pi 5 16 gig is here. Uh, I have one and uh, people are ordering them and using them for things. Apparently the CM5 16 gig is also being built uh, well, being built in February, it looks like, and should be in stock in early March. Uh, people have also been asking about 8 gig CM5s. Those, I've seen them coming here and there, but I mean, any time that Raspberry Pi launches a product, the first couple months are just, you know, it's painful trying to find one. And that's before the chip shortages. That was the case with every Pi launch. So that's just normal. In a few months, I don't think that there will be any issue getting any, any of the models that you want, as long as you look on like rpilocator.com or something. People were also asking a lot of questions. So I, I, I've said this before, I'm not like deep into microcontrollers. I do very basic things with them. Uh, but there's interfaces on the RP2350 and the RP2040, the PIOs and HSTX and things like that, that are very high speed and can do things like USB 2.0. People are asking about that. And it sounds like uh, people were discussing some options uh, for these interfaces. And some things uh, software might be able to help solve the firmware and things like that. But other things, it sounds like a future RP chip might uh, have more interfaces that every time you give someone something new, they find ways to kind of stretch it and bend it. And then eventually you realize, oh, th this thing, we really should have focused on this because this is the killer app. And I think for a lot of the people, the, the PIO on RP2040 was, and uh, hopefully these interfaces can, can do more and more things in future generations of the RP chips. And uh, a few people are asking about this. I asked about this when I first saw the uh, Pi 5 before launch, I asked about this. And after launch, I've asked about it. And a lot of people are asking about this. People who want to tinker with hardware would love the idea of taking the RP1 chip off of the Pi 5 and just sticking it onto a PCI Express card and having that for their computer, whatever it is. Basically, you could have all the Raspberry Pi GPIO functionality in whatever computer, uh, whether it's your desktop tower PC or you know convert it from an M.2 slot or something. And uh, Eben said they actually exist. And I, I, I did see one. I never showed a picture of this, but I saw one of these, uh, basically a development card. They had a, a card about this big with the RP1 on it. It's a, uh, they had all the interfaces broken out for testing because they were developing the RP1 chip for years on multiple Pi generations. So having the ability to test that as a standalone device was helpful. He said no commitment, um, but he said it is kind of awesome to have a tower PC with full Raspberry Pi IO. And I concur. Like It's kind of like the RP2040 was a runaway success for Raspberry Pi. I, sometimes I see something like this seems like a card that for hardware tinkering people, this would be a huge card for, for people to have. And it would also be like, you know, Raspberry Pi can, can have their lunch and eat it too. They could build this card and it's not gonna take away from the SBC business because the SBC is still an interesting form factor, but it could open up a new market of hardware tinkering for people with desktop computers, uh, putting them in servers that servers could control other things using the full Raspberry Pi suite of software. I don't know, I think that's a cool idea. 
Uh, but let's head over to page two of the uh, transcript. And someone here asked about uh, NVIDIA CUDA GPU integration. And Evan said, I have, uh, Jeff may have made some progress with non AMD GPUs. And yes, in fact, I have and uh, working on that right now. I have an Intel Arc card running on the Pi 5 over there with some bugs, some fun things in it, but uh, we'll get to that. So at this point, we have AMD GPU running great. You can put any modern AMD GPU on a Raspberry Pi 5 and get close to full performance. The, the main limitation, of course, is the Pi's single lane of PCI Express Gen 3. Uh, but I have Intel GPUs working, not through my work. This is through the community's work, um, and I'll talk more about that later. But uh, the only one that's not working, which does work great on other ARM platforms, is NVIDIA. And NVIDIA has a lot of great hardware. The company, you know, think of them what you will, but I did finally get a response from an NVIDIA engineer about the open source driver for it. So we'll see where that goes. Um, anyway, that's yeah, more like a GPU that incorporates a Pi. It's always fun to see the setups where the GPU is this big and your computer is that big. And someone asked here about Wi-Fi 7 coming to the Pi. Now, you can't actually get Wi-Fi 7 on a Pi using a hat that has an A plus E key. You can use like the Intel, I think it's the BE200 chip. Uh, you can get those pretty cheap. So you can get Wi-Fi 7 on a Pi 5 today, but incorporated into the Pi. Now this, this is something interesting that I think we can draw some conclusions from. Uh, Eben said that Wi-Fi 5, which is on the Pi 3 plus 4 and 5, and the CM4 and CM5, and the Pi 400, Pi 500, uh, it's all basically the same chip. Even the Pi 02W, I think, has the same chip. I don't know if it's the exact same chip on the Pico W, but anyway, they, they've done a lot with this. They've kind of stretched it as far as it can go, and the maximum speeds I think we can expect out of it is over 100 megabits, which is, it's good. It's, it's not amazing, though, nowadays. He says they've probably shipped the last flagship product with that tech, which means the next generation would have something newer and something faster. And so someone was asking about how that Wi-Fi chip is attached. It's attached, attached using an interface called SDIO, which is uh, similar to the, the kind of interface that the micro SD card uses or EMMC storage would use. And uh, are there limitations with that? Uh, what would happen? What would it take to get to Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 7 uh, or anything newer than that? And uh, Eben says SDIO has a lot of bandwidth, which is true. It, there's there's a lot of bandwidth in in uh, certain applications like EMMC. I think 5.1 or whatever the standard is can get pretty fast. But he said, and and this is a long way away. I don't know what that means, whether it's years or months or whatever. Uh, you'd want to provision the Pi 6 SoC, which, like I said, these things take years and years to 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 make. Um, which probably means that there's at least a design on the table. I don't know if they have chips yet or anything, uh, but he would want to have a PCIe lane for Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi 7 doesn't even need that much. It could use Gen 2 or Gen 3, and one lane of it would be plenty for the bandwidth. But he says uh, the best benefit would be getting rid of UART for Bluetooth, uh, which would probably solve some painful issues with, uh, with the Bluetooth communications and the chip that they're using. Um, but this, to me, this is like one of the most interesting parts of this whole conversation. If they're planning on having another PCIe lane for Wi-Fi, what I would love to see is having like a bunch of PCIe lanes, like maybe eight or more. Uh, but what this tells me is at, at least it sounds like they're going to add at least one more PCIe lane. And what I'm wondering is if they used a Wi-Fi chip that was on the Pi 5, uh, but some some models of like the compute module wouldn't have it, would they be able to expose that other lane so we'd have two lanes of PCIe Gen 3 or maybe two lanes of PCIe Gen 4 or whatever it is. Uh, more bandwidth is better. All the things that I do, if I can get more bandwidth, I'm going to take more bandwidth because I could get actual 10 gigabit Ethernet. Uh, or if you upgrade to PCIe Gen 4, you could get uh, you know 25 gig Ethernet. You could get uh, multiple 2.5 gig ports and, and have a Pi router that does a lot of stuff especially with an upgraded CPU. Uh, you could have uh, more GPU horsepower because you'd be able to supply the GPU faster with uh, memory. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities this could open up. So I think, in my mind, the Pi 6 is probably already something that they either have chips in hand uh, or they're far along the design process. And this kind of leaks out, I think, that there will be at least one more lane of PCI Express and I'm hoping that there will be more bandwidth and uh, more interfaces. I don't know. Uh, but I think that the, the future is still bright for the Pi platform in general, the, the flagship Pis. 
Uh, the Pi 5 is obviously more expensive than past generations, and a lot of people have realized, you know, many PCs, like an N100 or N150 or something like that, is, is a great option in comparison to a Pi if you're just using the Pi as a computer or home lab server. Uh, but if you need an SBC, the Pi 5 has been very good and uh, already has seen a lot of improvement, and I'm, I'm looking forward to whatever Raspberry Pi comes out with next. And uh, there's also plenty of other cool things out there too. The other reason I did this video is because I wanted to see, you can see that, you've probably seen a couple bits during the video of this little garbage mat I have in here, and the green behind me. Um, I wanted to test this new, uh, well, it's not new, it's very old uh, matting setup that I have with my little portable green screen behind me, which you can't see right now. Let, let me turn that off and you can actually see it. Yes. Delete. Yes, there we go. See? That's what is actually behind me, and it's right here too. Like I, this is not the best setup for green screening for sure, but uh, there it is. Yeah. So there's Jeff, level two Jeff. You know, we do weird stuff on this channel and experimental things. And uh, Pi Six. You know, it sounds like one is in development for sure, and I would guess that it's further along in development than I expect. 